Barakat to Yahweh, Barakat to Yahweh Shai, all praises and every glory be unto Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rakah HaKwadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught us his truth and who rule well, peace and love, salutations and mercy be unto the hopeful elect, Yuakim and few Akwatim, that believe in Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai with their whole heart, mind, body and spirit, and who are waiting patiently and diligently. For these last and final prophecies to unfold, for them to happen in the earth, and for the return of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, who is going to gather the elect of the nation of Israel from the four corners of the earth, wherever they be scattered. You know, those of you that believe in truth and in sincerity, you know, he's going to cause us to inherit the land, to inherit the world, to inherit the heathen. You know, to rule over and be joint heirs with him in the kingdom of heaven and to receive the promises promised unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it's only for Israel only. You know, it's not for, you know, you heathens. It's not for you natural heathens. All right. You people of the other nations. It's only for the true Israelites, which are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans which eventually all Israel shall be saved with the everlasting salvation, although two-thirds of them have to be punished right now because of their wickedness, you know, and one-third of the nation of Israel being saved, which is the elect. Lambacking off a video from the beloved elder <coughs> out in uh, Las Vegas, you know, whose uh, channel is GMS Vegas Sit-Downs, 144k if you're not subscribed already you know please go and subscribe and support and watch the elder you know who makes uh very edifying videos uh the title of the lesson is when these christians continue to make the same erroneous arguments you know which there was a christian you know who was making the same argument that all christians make you know in regards to trying to uh, uh, weasel their way or make a, a, a way for them to be saved as well as any other heathen. You know, the, the salvation, you know, that the Bible speaks of is only for the 12 tribes of Israel, beginning with the elect of them. You know, the, the scripture that he brought out was Leviticus, the 19th chapter, and I believe the 34th verse, which reads, But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you, as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. All right, I am Yahweh your power. And the stranger, as the beloved elder was going into, is speaking about an Israelite that would be a foreigner to the land of Israel, all right, which is a permanent domain, you know, his permanent habitation, you know, the place where he lives permanently would be another country. You know, but he comes from that country to the land of Israel. You're not supposed to treat him as as an, a heathen. You're not you're not supposed to treat him, you know, as if he's, you know, a foreigner. You're supposed to treat him with respite. You know, you're supposed to treat him with respect. You know, don't treat him like a heathen. You know, don't disrespect him. Don't have an a, a attitude towards him. Don't grudge against him. You know, but treat him with respite. You know, as he as he stay with you within that temporary, you know, uh, stay that temporary lodging until he goes back to where he goes. All right, and the scripture that I would like to start out with would be Obadiah one and twelve. It says, "But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother, in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah, in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have." spoken proudly in the day of distress which the scripture is speaking in regards to the children of edom and their role in helping the babylonians you know to take down you know israel to take down uh, uh, judah benjamin and levi and how they went into our lands how they how they captured how they you know uh, um uh, uh turned us over and killed you know, a lot of the, 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 the southern kingdom of Israel. So the scripture says that they should not have looked on thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. You know, because ultimately, 
you know, the self-proclaimed white men, which are the Edomites, are close in relation to us, you know, because our forefather and their forefather was twins in the womb. And that's Jacob and Esau, you know, but Esau broke that brotherly covenant, you know, with all of his perpetual hatred that he has towards the nation of Israel. But the point being is in the day that he became a stranger, which shows you that Israelites can be considered strangers too. Now, strangers to what regard? All right. When you go into, you know, the Bible commentary, you know, a good Bible commentary to look up, you know, on this particular verse, you know, which this, um, if he is a heathen, you know, uh, he got this particular one right. And that is um, Matthew Poole, if I'm not mistaken, you know, which I was looking it up last night. Yep. And it says, um, became a stranger. All right. Which I'm looking this up in Bible Hub. It says, having by the misery of war been made a captive and lost the former right and liberty in his own country. All right. Was now looked upon as a stranger. An example, one who had no more right to anything in the land. All right. Because you did have Israelites that were scattered abroad from the various different wars and cap and captivities all right, that they went into. You know, after the Babylonians had taken the children of Benjamin, Judah, and Levi, which were collectively called Jews, all right, within that region, you know, uh, uh, that they were dwelling in within uh, Mesopotamia. All right, you had uh, Babylon within Mesopotamia. You know, eventually the Babylonians were taken down. And who were they taken down by? You know, they were taken down by the Persians and the Medes. You know, and after the Persians and the Medes, you had the Greeks. And from these various different captivities, you know, because after being in uh, Babylon for 70 years, some of the children of Israel returned. But then you had some that never returned. Now, for what reason, you know, is to be known, you know, or maybe they, they had, a, um, you know, land there that they got, you know, which it was more lucrative for them to be in that land and in that region, you know, than to return home. You know, that's to be known, you know. They could even uh, uh, dealt with the heathen woman and decide to stay because of her. But all in all, you know, when the children of Israel returned, all right, from that captivity, not all of them returned. And you can uh, find that out by reading the book of Acts, the second chapter, verse 1, which the uh, beloved elder brought this out as well. Acts 2 and 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, uh, they were all on one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house uh, where they were sitting. And, they, uh, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire. And it set upon them, uh, and set upon each of them. Which this is what Yahawashai, you know, um, meant when he told the disciples that became apostles, you know, to tarry in Jerusalem until the power is poured down from them on high, which was them receiving the Holy Spirit. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews. So who is this speaking about? This is speaking about Jews, which collectively Benjamin, Judah, and Levi were called Jews. All right, devout men out of every nation under heaven. See? And why were they out of every nation under heaven? The elder brought this out as well. Deuteronomy 16 and 16, three times in a year shall all the males appear before Yahweh thy power in the place which he shall choose in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, in the Feast of Weeks, in the Feast of Tabernacles. All right, uh, and they shall not appear before the empty. So obviously these were uh, um, Jews all right, Israelites, they were still believers, although they were living within other lands. So they were making that, that if you will, for lack of better words, that hodge, you know, or that trip back to, you know, uh, uh, Jerusalem, you know, to keep these particular feasts, you know, and this feast in particular that they were keeping in the book of Acts was Pentecost, which is the Feast of Weeks. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. 
Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? You know, they were speaking Hebrew. And how hear we every man in our own tongue, where, uh, where, wherein we were born, Parthians, you know, which is a, um, a city that's close to the Carmania Desert, you know, which Carmania is, you know, an ancient name for Persia. So remember, you had Israelites within Persia. You had Israelites within the land of the Medes. You had Israelites within the land of Elam. All right, and dwellers in Mesopotamia, which Mesopotamia is a large region with multiple different cities in it. All right, and one place in particular that's within Mesopotamia, all right, is, is Babylon. So going real quick, you can do a simple search on Google. It's Babylon and Mesopotamia. And it says Babylon was a state in ancient Mesopotamia, which this is coming from the his, uh, thehistory.com. Babylon, Babylonia was a state in ancient Mesopotamia, the city of Babylon whose ruins are located in present-day Iraq, was found more than 4,000 years ago as a small report town on the Euphrates River. It grew into one of the largest cities in the ancient world. It said modern-day Iraq. So some of those people that are over there in Iraq, today they will be Israelites. You know, the same as in Persia, you know, Iran. Some of them will be Israelites as well. Now, looking at them, can you tell that they're Israelites? No. But if their spirit you know, bears, with, bears witness with our spirit and they confess and praise Yahweh Shmi Yahweh and believe in this whole doctrine, how can you deny that they're Israelites? You know, the scriptures do say that Israel will be scattered within the four corners of the earth. So Israel is all over. You know, and the point that I'm driving is that all Israelites, after being in captivity, some of them did not return, although some of them did. You know, and being within these various different captivity, they held on to the knowledge of who they were, you know. So reading on, it says Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Ju Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia and Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in parts of Libya about Serene and the strangers of Rome. So Israelites were living within Rome. And they were called strangers of Rome. All right, you had Israelites in Rome. And to prove that, you know, going over to the book of Acts, the 18th chapter, in verse 2, it says, And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius, Claudius Caesar, had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. And came unto them. So you had Jews that were living in Rome. All right. Jews that were living in Rome. If they're living in Rome, what does that mean? That means that if they went to the land of Israel, they will be considered strangers or aliens. Even though that they're Israelites, because that's not their permanent domain. That's not their per permanent habitation. So going back, it says Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of Yahweh. So these were Israelite men that were gathered from all of the places where they live to come to Jerusalem. You know, now there was another point that was made, you know, and, um, you know, the, the, the point that the Christian was trying to make was that, you know, um, a heathen can keep the Passover, if I'm not mistaken. You know, I could be uh, misquoting them, but I, I believe that I heard something along the lines of, of like a stranger keeping the Passover. You know, strangers were not permitted to keep the Passover. The only ones that were permitted to keep the Passover were Israelites. Going to the book of John 12 and 1, it says, Then Yahweh six days before the Passover came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. And this is just to drive the uh, um, the thought of 
the time and the circumstance of what was going on. So this was six days before the Passover. All right. It says, and there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. So wait, it says that there were certain Greeks among them that came to worship at the feast. Why were these Greeks coming to worship at the feast? Three times in a year shall all the, thy males appear before Yahweh thy power in the place which he, which he shall choose in the feast of unleavened bread, in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles, and they shall not appear before Yahweh empty. So these were Israelites that spoke Greek, all right, that knew that they were Israelites and still believed, even though they spoke Greek. And we're going to prove that. And there were certain Greeks among them that came to worship at the feast. What feast? The feast of unleavened bread, which is the Passover. The same, therefore, uh, the same came, therefore, to Philip, which was of uh, Bethsaida, or B uh, Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we will see Yahawashai. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew Philip tell you, uh, and and again Andrew and Philip tell Yahawashai, and Yahawashai answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth for long. All right, but it, uh, but if it dieth, it bringeth forth much fruit. Now Yahawashai was speaking in this in this sentence. All right, in regards to himself being offered as a sacrifice for who? For the nation of Israel. And what proves that, right? The statement that he made is that if a corn of wheat fall into the ground, it, uh, and if, if it doesn't fall into the ground and die, it abideth for long. You know? So once you take a corn of wheat, you know, or seed, and you plant it into the, the ground, you know, it's going to generate what? Fruit of its likeness. Is going to generate fruit that is similar to wit. All right. So he was speaking about how he's going to gather them, you know, by way of uh, being uh, uh, put to death and being raised back up. He was going to bring forth fruit and that fruit was going to be of who? It was going to be of his own people. Going over to the book of Exodus. And this is the 12th chapter, verse 43. And Yahweh said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. So point blank, all right, Yahweh Shai, I mean Yahweh is 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 putting it out there, all right, that no stranger, which means no natural stranger, can eat of the Passover. But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, all right, then shall he eat thereof. So that lets you know that the servants that were brought had to have been Israelites. All right, who so uh, who gave themselves over or ser sold themselves into servitude, which Israelites did that, you know. And then once they were uh, uh, work for, you know, an, an individual for seven years, then then uh, that seven year would be the year of jubilee, which they, which they would go free with substance, they would go free with riches, and they would be on their own two feet. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. So now a foreigner. All right. Or a hired servant, which I'm going to go into, you know, some of these words to look them up. Bear with me, Baba Kasha. Going back to the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter in the 43rd verse, which I should have had this pulled up already. Salakia. And Yahweh said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. So the word there for stranger Within this verse is Nakar, which is dealing with someone that's foreign and is dealing with an alien. All right. It's dealing with uh, um, someone that's of another nation. It says, but every man's servant that is brought for money. All right. When he had when thou hast circumcised him. All right. Then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and the higher servant shall not eat thereof. So. The word there for foreigner, all right, the word there is that was shab, which is dealing with a, a, a stranger of another nation, all right? It says, in one's house 
shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry it forth or of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break the bone thereof. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover to Yahweh, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. All right, and he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be to him that is homeborn, and unto the stranger that sojourneth among us among you. So this word for stranger here is different from the car. It's different from Tawashab. The word stranger here is gar. All right, which is a sojourner, a temporary inhabitant, a newcomer lacking inherited rights, of foreigners in Israel, though conceded rights. So these are speaking about Israelites versus non-Israelites. Non-Israelites were not able to eat of the Passover, but, but Israelites, although they were strangers and from another country, were able to partake and eat of the Passover. All right. Now, in regards to the rights. All right. Because there was a time, you know, when when um, Israelites adapted to or adopted the way of the heathen, they adopted the habitus, you know, the uh, um, the way of life, the way of thinking, the mannerism, the way of dressing of the heathens. But by Yahweh dying and being that corn that that died and brought forth uh, uh, much grain, much fruit. All right which this gospel of Yahweh Shai was preached around that region, caused those Israelites that were scattered into foreign, foreign lands to re repent. So although being strangers from the land and not having uh, 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 rights, they, were, they in inherited rights through Yahweh Shai. They inherited the commonwealth of Israel. The book of Ephesians, the second chapter, and beginning at the 11th verse. It says, wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh were called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Well, first of all, the circumcision is for the children of Israel, you know, so by an Israelite being uncircumcised, they were looked at as Gentiles or they were looked at as heathens. Being uncircumcised and dwelling all right, in, in, in uh, foreign lands, you know, and speaking the language of the heathen, dressing like them, all right, having their mannerism, their thought. But once the gospel of Yahweh Shai was spread abroad to them, you know, some of them repented. So that's the reason why it says, wherefore, remember that in uh, being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is uh, circumcision in the flesh made by hands. And you want to know something? You had Israelites that were in the know whose circumcision became uncircumcision because they uh, uh, were doing that which was wicked in the eyes of Yahweh Bashmael was shot. And that's the reason why the scriptures say circumcise the foreskin of your heart. So reading on, it says that at uh, that at that time you were without Yahweh Shai being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without Yahweh in the world, but now Yahweh Shai, now in Yahweh Shai, ye who sometimes were far off were made nigh by the blood of Yahweh Shai. So we're going to look up the word commonwealth. The word commonwealth is politia, and the word politia goes into the word polites, which is dealing with the citizen, all right, the inhabitant of any city or country, the association of another and citizenship of fellow citizen, fellow countrymen. So although they were the uh, although they were they were considered strangers or aliens, all right, being Israelites that now believe upon Yahweh Shai, all right, they can enjoy the citizenship, all right, or the rights of a citizen, all right, being brought back into their nation via Yahweh Shai, believing upon him and repenting. So you heathens, all right, you natural heathens, there's no salvation for you. Come on, man. All right, and for you Christians to keep making these dead, erroneous statements, all right, and trying to weasel and squeeze your way into this thing, you can't. You know, so 
with that, I truly hope that this lesson was edifying. Until the next time, a shalom.